Get dancing. Man. Come on, come on. Oh, you are dancing. I'm sorry. Wow, what does that mean? I think you're bad at this. Uh, I'm Andy Burkowski. This is VGS. We got Anton Mack. Uh, man, I always forget that face. Jesse. Jesse. Travis. And Travis with a T. <laughs> Leah. Liam Brand is here. And this week, we've been talking a lot about Mass Effect Andromeda, as we do every single week. But <laughs> the game's already out. It's been out for a couple of weeks, and the folks at Bioware thought it would be prudent to release a patch. Mass Effect Andromeda patch 1.05 is out and promises a few changes. What those changes are? Uh, pretty straightforward. They added the option to skip the autopilot sequence in the galaxy map. Which is huge, right? Like so Anton Moon good. played so much. So, oh my god, I feel like I spend most of that game. Yeah, in, uh, there. Like. I don't. I won't explore the different clusters because it will take too long. Because mm -hmm. you literally are just waiting for this little VR ride without the virtual reality. So, for what's your the alternative? Ship. Like now, is is it more like the original uh, trilogy? Well, what? you don't. The, in the original, I, you remember it was a little ship yeah. that went across, and I loved that. Yeah. And there was fuel, and, and I felt like, like yeah, no, stuff. the Reapers. <laughs> That's what I would say. I was only 23. Um, but in this go around, I, I played a little bit of it today. You don't, you still have that sequence when you go from cluster to cluster or system to system because yeah. you're in one cluster. But when you go from planet to planet, you just press a button and literally there's just, it fades to black and you have the view of the planet. Oh. It makes so much more sense. And it also kind of proves that. That was not used to hide a loading screen, which I thought yeah. would be the obvious reason they have this elongated and unnecessary VR thing. But I guess someone at Bioware actually thought, like, no, this would be cool. Let's spend a lot of resources on it. Oh, it's and the worst. Now it's gone. You can still do it, which is great. Um, they increased the inventory limits, which is hilarious, because I wasted all of my goddamn perks on increasing my inventory limits. And now it's like 300. Before it was at 45, and I was barely able to play the game. The probably biggest and most effective uh, change that they got was improving lip sync and facial acting during conversations, including localized VO, and fixing several bugs that have to do with the facial animations of the characters. So that famous line that we all know and love now, that my face is tired, that scene's different. Apparently, it's a lot different. Yeah, you haven't seen so it? much no, better. I, no. She doesn't look tired, even though she does. Oh, it's... Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired right what now, so I have her exact same mindset. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but she, like, grasps her face. It does and, look like, better. Doesn't look... And they, they fixed her makeup, which is kind of, like, a weird thing to say, mm -hmm. but before she kind of, like... She looked pretty clowny. No, she just didn't like get done up, man. Yeah, and she, she has body movement now. Yeah. Actual, like, she gives you, like, body signs yeah. and everything. It looks so gives much better. Gives you body signs? Get, like, she's actually mm. using her movement to convey tone instead of just deadpan looking at you yeah. going, you oh, sure my face is tired. <laughs> <laughs> look at no, these body signs he's giving to me. <laughs> yeah. No, they actually look human and, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. It so, basically, this is out. It's making changes. Appreciate this, Travis. And... I think the big question now is not whether or not this should have been done because that that can be talked about until you know the cows come home as old people say and myself. But I think it's more about the role of us, the people that play games and talk about games and live games and the role of them, the people that make supposedly listen to and for a living create the things we love. It's a really interesting dynamic in terms of media. I, I remembered a instance in the last year or so involving comic books when it was uh, announced and shared. I don't know if you guys are following this, that uh, Captain America was actually someone to do with the, um, what is the, the bad side of the, the other? The Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, you're right about that. They are Nazis. But what, it was uh, the, the Hydra. Hydra, Hydra yes, yeah. that he was actually a sleeper agent for Hydra. And the moral outrage from the community, the people, real people, that said that my grandfather fought against the Nazis and this is a symbol and how dare you uh, reappropriate this symbol, led to, you know, they didn't exactly change it, but there was enough of an outrage that they addressed it. This seems to be a similar reaction because there was such an explosive reaction to the eyes and, you know, how terrible this game is in a lot of ways in terms of that relationship, there's a lot of pitfalls and um, 
nuanced positions here. Should consumers be allowed to complain if a game is terrible? Absolutely. Of course. Totally. totally. But people always say you complain with your dollar, though. Like, why, why do you think you have the right to protest, to extend your voice in such a big way? Because, well, you want something to be good. That's why you yeah. support it. So if it's not good, then what else are you going to do besides complain? Well, you're not going to buy it, right? You're exactly. going to move on to the next thing. But this yeah. is different. These are people saying, not only am I not going to buy Mass Effect, I'm going to tell you why it's broken and why there's terrible representations of different people that are important to me. Those or opinions the are important to the developers, them. aren't they? What, what opinions? We need to voice those opinions to developers so that they know what they need to fix. But that's the line I'm talking about here. Like, where where is that between, like, is the role of the developer just to shovel us what we want, which I think is what Mass Effect Andromeda was, was a Bioware team thinking, this is what our fans want. We know they want four different gay characters. They want a trans character. Let's do that poorly. And they want ex- exploration. They want big worlds. Click, click, click. Let's there's, do that poorly, yeah, too. Yeah. There's no real artistic <laughs> vision of this is the story I'm trying to tell, though. So that's what I, I think in Mass Effect Andromeda is the best example of developers just doing what they Mass think Effect people Andromeda want. Mass Effect Andromeda didn't push enough boundaries. It was playing it so safe and trying to appeal to everybody that at no point did they try to push the artistic medium. Mm-hmm. They were just going to cookie cutter out another Mass Effect game and bank on that and just take that money and leave. You know, they weren't trying to make any crazy new lengths with this game. They, they just claimed went they in. did, though. Like, when, in the, did it really? The marketing campaign said, like, the this is going to be, you know, it. we're going to push it in these big ways and it's going to do great things things so okay we'll take that conceit that they weren't trying to tread artistic ground new artistic ground even if they were the game ultimately didn't we all agree on that right yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. everyone's on that page even if you haven't played it don't Obviously. worry just, just agree with me. i don't know <laughs> so that happened should we as consumers should me and anton max start a twitter page said bioware mass effect andromeda sucks Everyone should listen to me because we put in 200 hours and were hurt playing this game and really thought it was a spit in the face of the legacy of Mass Effect. What should we do as consumers to make sure this kind of doesn't happen again? There's got to be like a moderate line, man, especially with community feedback, because we have mm -hmm. so many people on Twitter and on in the YouTube comments just like screeching and yelling so much Mm -hmm. absurd stuff that. Poison, it, just it, pure poison. Exactly, and it's it's absolutely getting so lost in translation, and it's kind of, it's no wonder we got a game like this, because we have, there's so many voices that are so over the top and so, mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, angry about everything yeah. Bioware does, that they think, like, oh, the only, fear, way, maybe? To, yeah, the only, mm-hmm. uh, the only way to uh, appease our fans is by just giving them all of this stuff. And constantly. it's so important now, more than ever, to be able to make a concise point, right? Yeah. With all of this screeching and angry <laughs> oh, poison um, flinging. Like, uh, consumers to make a concise yes, point. Yes, yeah. uh, to make a calm and concise point about a game and say, these were the shortcomings. This is mm-hmm. what was wrong with it. There were clear and obvious faults when this game launched that should not have happened. And to concisely make those points in YouTube or in tweets. Yeah, so isn't that what, the role of the critic, though? No, but that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's yeah. the role of uh, Sir Andy Burkowski and his ilk to look, I made a joke there, to look at, you know, the game as in its artistic merits. But I think a lot of the audience here believe that Mass Effect means something more than just a video game. And I don't know, I think I would agree with that in a lot of ways. It represents maybe the pinnacle of this sort of gaming. And as a result, it becomes a part of your identity almost. So when your identity is being attacked, by, ironically, the creators, it's almost as if you're justified in doing whatever you can to insult no. other people, no, it's no, to no. criticize the developers. Isn't it? I think there is, absolutely. <laughs> yes. However, I think what it's if entitlement. it is your literal identity? What if you are a transgender person and you look at this incredibly like ridiculous mm-hmm. and disrespectful display of uh, transgender people? So the Hanley Abrams games, character. Yeah, the Hanley yeah. A- Abrams character uh, got a lot of flack from both sides of people who don't like transgender people in general and saying idiots uh, yeah yeah general fucktards excuse me hey we're not on radio anymore <laughs> yeah by the That's way great. <laughs> yeah. get ready so, so like these these dumbasses who really like just hate tra- transgender people and don't want to see them uh, are hating um ainsley harriet or uh, ainsley what's, harriet what, what's her name <laughs> that is a dope trans Whoa. name yeah. like that is a of... really good androgynous name <laughs> That's also the name of a british chef <laughs> All right, Liam, I don't care that much about your life. Okay, get back All to right. what's going on. Um, but then you have uh, people who 
are a part like of uh, the LGBT community mm-hmm. or at least sympathetic to it who are seeing this like ridiculous tokenized mm-hmm. image of a trans person and saying like this is our identity and it's totally being disrespected. So what, what's your point here? So what should they do? These so are both do, sides do that are... they have more of a right to actually complain and to actually defend themselves than people who are just like, oh, my game isn't what I want it to be. I <laughs> would say no. I would say fundamentally, wow. yeah, it, me, I know. Yeah. Can you believe it? No one saw that coming. <laughs> I think that fundamentally the right for the creator and the artist to create and reinforce that artistic vision, even if it is such a poorly inconceived one, poorly conceived rather, inconceived, <laughs> one as Mass Effect Andromeda that didn't follow through, that just didn't really have a vision. I still think that they need to be able to do that and fail more than we have any sort of right to ask for more and actually get it in this game. I think it's completely reasonable to go to Bioware and just say, like, listen, go to Bioware to (laughs) to voice your concerns and say, I would like this in the other game, but I don't think they have to listen. Artists can make something bad. But what if it has these social implications? Then you can say that, but that doesn't mean that your voice matters more than the same fucktard that's saying that poisonous thing. The, the these right are real of people the, whose lives are being really affected. These are also real people with ill-conceived notions that believe having a Hainsley Abram trans character in their game is going to ruin their whole identity. It's the yeah. same thought process, but a very different moral center. I really strongly hold the position that both of them shouldn't actually get what they want from this game right now in order to maintain the artistic vision. Personally, I think one side is deplorable and should run into the sea with rocks in their pockets and the other should be protected. And it's it's very important that it is represented. There is an instance, though, where Bioware did make a choice that upset people, but they stuck to their guns because they thought the game would be better. Liam is going to play in just a second. Uh, interview that I did with Patrick Weeks, year, yeah, years ago. Uh, I was going to say weeks ago. The uh, <laughs> aha, the writer, uh, one of the writers in Mass Effect 3, is a huge Bioware guy, and he wrote the finishing story arc for Tally Zora, one of the, in my opinion, best characters in Mass Effect. And... Best girl in Mass Effect by far. Okay, all right, Jesse, thank you. I already you think you're cool. You want to make this a gender thing. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it so is, let's, So let's hear the words of Patrick Weeks talking about Tally Zora... And why Bioware did not make a produced, lip-synced, actual face for her? Oh, we went around that so many times. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there was a point where we were going to show the face in-game, and then we realized we were doing a ton of work. The amount of work, just purely on a technical level, um, I would have been great showing the face in-game, uh, you know, if she'd gotten the planet or, you know, right before she died or, or you know, something at, at a moment of, you know, emotional climax uh, for her character arc. Um, but just the sheer amount of technical work necessary to make a completely new alien face and get the lip sync rigged up would have would have probably meant cutting, you know, cutting a type of enemy creature. And really. Uh, yeah, it, the lip sync, especially, um, you know, each game, <laughs> each game is built on the shoulders of the last. Again, Patrick Weeks and cameo for me saying really, I, I no, I really do think that speaks to the realities of making video games. It's not always malicious intent. It's not always people deluded and, you know, not want to give what the fans wanted. It is dollars and cents fundamentally. And that was something that was big for a lot of people. But if you look at the actual people that played Mass Effect, most of them did not romance Tally Zora. Most of them used a soldier profile and were mostly Paragon. Most of them romanced Liara because it was easier. So it's really difficult for development studios to put so much resources around one little thing to make it special. But when they do that, when they do cut things just to make one moment special, like I think they did a lot of that in a lot of my favorite games, most of them made by Obsidian, Fall in New Vegas. You take Boone to go kill Caesar. Emotional dialogue, almost cried. Incredible. When they do stuff like that, it's what changes games from being emulations of life to being a expression of life, in my opinion. No longer are we just playing a story, 
but you're hearing something that's true. And holy shit, I don't want to keep playing games that have no truth in it. And I think that's what Bioware did here. Developers really need to start pushing a little bit harder. There's been a lot of pussyfooting for the last couple of years around some, se- <laughs> around some more serious topics. Like, yeah. this game at no point pushed any boundaries at all. There was no Except for stunning moments. In- well, yeah. okay, Push so my boundaries. We haven't, uh, again, <laughs> for the autopilot. <laughs> I, I've been talking a lot. I've been spewing. I've been opining a lot with my big ass face. So I, I do want to give you guys a moment just to... I guess, have you, have you come to a conclusion here about what you think these roles should be? Because it's so convoluted, it's confusing, but developer, consumer, you know, who's got something? It's Who, all right you think to is... take opinions. It's all right to kind of dabble in the suggestion box to figure out what's going wrong. But once again, like, like you said, you know, they're pissing people off because, you know what, to a certain extent, they're eliciting some kind of response, and that's mm-hmm. what you want from a medium of that. And I mean, look at look at what Hideo Kojima's done for years. No, let's not. No, let's not. No, 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 no don't, that's don't, a whole big old bag. Don't, don't, give me, <sighs> don't give me that. But look at, like, the, the Phantom Pain. That, that, oh, that oh, game no. <laughs> alienated so many, uh, Andy like, Burkowski. so many people. <laughs> Like because you needed to it's play poorly made. every single game, including okay. the PS games, bad. to like hey. get it. And but that's bad. That hey. was so so many people love that. So okay, all sorry. The fans what are you trying to say here? Love that game. Just the wrong opinions. A, oh, what are you man. trying to say here? Like I don't know because that was absolute like. I don't want to say like bravery, but that was like doing something. Doing <laughs> something. Let's talk about the bravery. Yeah, no, 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 no. But, but, but seriously, like that's that's cool. something that is that was not that wasn't done for the fans, and that was something that kind of alienated a lot of people. But that in the end ended up with something really freaking great. I would say that the idea that you will come back and ask people why they hated it, you can do that, but I wouldn't want that answer to hurt whatever story you're trying to tell. Because I think it is more important. We've seen it with indie games. We saw it with Hideo Kojima as much as I I didn't like what was created. When people stick to a vision and create something that appeals to that vision, the content speaks for itself. So I, you know, I really think just like this song right here, it had one goal in mind. To bring us a smooth, jazzy time. And boy, is it smooth. <laughs> All right, this is BGS. So this oh. is Michael Haggins, more importantly. Andy Burkowski. Ending off here for VGS. Thanks, everyone. We got Anton. Hey, oh. Go, we got Jesse. The oh, yeah. Go. The credits. To the credits. Um, Trevor. Uh, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching, baby. We're going to be back 